And the handshakes are taking place down in front of us. Let me run you through the two lineups. Portsmouth with David Ford in goal, Gareth Evans, Christian Burgess, Matt Clark, and Andy Stevens, the back four. Danny Rose, Michael Doyle are the two sitting midfielders behind Carl Baker, Cal Naismith, Carl Bennett, and Connor Chaplin up front. The subs Liam O'Brien, Gary Roberts, Nick Cabamba, Jack Watmore, Jamal Lowe, Amin Linganzi, and Stanley Abora. The Cheltenham lineup: Scott Brown in goal, the back four: Jordan Cranston, Will Boyle, Daniel O'Shaughnessy, and Liam Davis. Harry Pell, Kyle Storer, James Rowan, Billy Waters in midfield. Dan Holman and Danny Wright up front. The subs: Callum Kitchka, Jack Bathroom, Aaron Downs, Jack Munns, Carl Wooten, James Dayton, and Carl Winchester. Referee today is Christopher Sargentson from Staffordshire. Three Pompey games he's taken charge of this season. A win and two draws, the most recent of which, the 1-1 draw with Plymouth on Good Friday. Right, we are finally going to be able to get underway. Pompey, usual home strip going from left to right. Cheltenham, red and white striped shirts, black shorts, black socks. And we finally, with Carl Bennett stood over the ball, are underway here at Fratton Park. And Pompey immediately send the ball out to this near right-hand touchline. Pompey going from left to right towards the Milton end in this first half. Cheltenham right to left as we look at things from the position we have back here at the back of the south stand. Davis immediately goes long, too long, and go out away to our left-hand side for a goal kick. David Ford's goal, a number of Player of the Season awards handed out. The, I think, most notable, the one handed out by our colleagues from the Portsmouth News, given to Ender Stevens. I did check the trophy guy. It hasn't been rubbed out who won it in 89-90. You are still on there. Do you agree with that decision of Ender Stevens? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's uh, I think he's been the man of the two seasons, but certainly this season. Baker to Chaplin on the right-hand side. Baker on the ground, but advantage as Chaplin breaks into the area, past one challenge and then another. Then he runs into a perfectly legitimate and excellent challenge from Liam Davis, and Cheltenham will clear. Well, it would have been interesting if he'd gone over after that first foot out and tried to attempt at a tackle on him because he skipped past them, but it looked like he stumbled a bit. Coming down the left-hand side, here's Billy Waters for Cheltenham. Talking of stumbling, that's a, exactly what Dan Holman did there. We see this so often at the start of games at Fratton Park, don't we? Bennett trying to play Chaplin through, inside right channel edge of the box. Oh, now he's into space in the penalty area. Chaplin still going. Another time he's taken a touch too many and through to the keeper. Well, it's a common start by Chaplin. That time there, I thought he worked on his right foot and it was just worth a try, I thought, because you know, he wouldn't be able to come back inside. There was too many covering defenders on the inside where he wanted to come back from the right on his left foot have a go with your right early on long ball forward Clark wins the header at the back for Pompey Cheltenham can't pick up possession Baker's there to mop up Evans one of a number of players out of contract goes to Baker tries a long ball down the right hand side easy for Davis to intercept and here's Carl Storer in the centre of midfield James Rowe being hassled and harried by Michael Doyle sporting a fresh haircut today it goes long and Stevens wins the header at Cheltenham. Find it to the tall figure of Harry Pell over on that right hand side. They are a tall side, Cheltenham, aren't they? It's not often you see a, a right winger with the size of Pell. Free kick, and we'll see whether they're going to launch everyone into the box as they have a free kick just inside Portsmouth's territory. You'd expect so with Gary Johnson. I mean, that's how. Oh, he hasn't taken a quick one. Oh, no, the referee's not happy. They wanted to take a quick free kick, the referee. Looking back, to how, you're looking back to how he got Yeovil up to the Championship and very much all based on set plays, large proportion of the goals through that. So here we go, first one, and it's going to be launched in there by James Rowe. And everyone except Chaplin goes back for Portsmouth. The inflatable still bobbing around inside Fratton Park. Burgess wins the first header out of the box, and Baker will pick it up and try and take it up towards halfway. Near right-hand side, finds Rose. Good work from Rose to get away from about three challenges. Baker on this right-hand side, coming forward. And then he cuts back and finds Rose, sporting Loomis orange boots and a lovely left-footed crossfield ball to Bennett, who would have been better to leave that one for Stevens behind him. And now Cheltenham win it and Pell has got space to go into. Short ball in field. Touch there from Wright. Wright does well initially to keep hold of possession, but there's simply too many blue shirts there. And Baker then loses out of midfield. Three gone. Portsmouth nil, Cheltenham nil, BBC Radio Solent Sport as Doyle finds Carl Bennett, he slips, picked up by Rowan midfield. Confident start from Cheltenham, here's Waters, he's got space 30 yards out, might want to hit one from here with his left foot, he does and over the bar. Well, that's probably the, uh, the quickest start we've seen for the game, isn't it? Both teams playing at a tempo, wanted to get at each other. 
the start to the game, matches the atmosphere. Which is excellent, as you'd imagine. Michael Eisner is in the house, effectively. Not quite sure where he's watching the game from, but he is here today. Obviously hoping to get that takeover secured. Let me just run through that title scenario for you once more. Portsmouth must win to have any chance of winning the title. And if they win, and Plymouth and Doncaster both fail to win, Portsmouth will be League Two champions. And Plymouth are already 1-0 down in the early stages against Grimsby. Hartlepool is the venue for Doncaster in a huge game because Doncaster or Hartlepool must win that match if they have any chance of remaining in the division. They could still win and go down if Newport win. Cheltenham on the left-hand side with Waters looking to try and take on Evans. Cuts back in field. And then space on this left-hand side for Davis once more. Cuts back past Baker. Naismith sends him to the ground, but the free kick is not coming. It's a throw-in to Portsmouth deep inside their own half. 0-0. Evans takes quickly to Rose. And Evans will go long. Chaplin might be able to chase. Headed away at the back by O'Shaughnessy, who scored for Cheltenham to give him the lead in the match at Warden Road before a Michael Smith equaliser saw it finish 1-1. Ender Stevens coming down that left-hand side. Saw a dead end, though, so decided to come back to Doyle. Bennett and Doyle knock it around on halfway. And Doyle will go back to Christian Burgess. And Burgess finds... Evans now here's Rose in the centre of the midfield and he switches play out towards the left hand side Stevens has it and Stevens will win a throw for Pompey level with the area on that left side far side as we look 0-0 BBC Radio Solent Sport and good to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon for this late kickoff for the 51st and final match of Portsmouth season another throw to Pompey this time it's back towards halfway Remember that Cheltenham secured their League Two status with that win at home to Hartlepool a week ago. Had they lost or drawn, they would have been in the relegation battle, so it means they can enjoy this one a bit more than they might have done otherwise. They've started confidently, but Pompey in possession. And out to the left-hand side, Ender Stevens has it 40 yards from goal. Down the touchline to Naismith. Stevens launches it deep towards the far post. Davis is there to try and nod away from Evans. He does that, but has to concede a throw at the same time. Evans to Baker. Evans chips that one in field, but Pompey lose it. Rose wins it back half the pitch well. And Doyle now has it in the centre of the Cheltenham half. And just hooks it out to the left, where Stevens has got a bit of space to run onto the ball. Pell's there. Early ball in, but beyond the head of Chaplin. And then the left-back, Liam Davis, had all day to take it down and to clear it. Doyle short to Burgess. And here's Clark inside his own half to Michael Doyle Pompey in possession Cheltenham still with two up front but set forward as Burgess steps away from a challenge Exeter 1 Carlisle nil. Exeter remember with that playoff spot secured but if Carlisle fail to win well, they're in real danger of losing out on a place in the playoffs with no fewer than six teams below the playoffs as things stand in with the shout depending on who can get three points this afternoon. Pell on the right-hand side for Cheltenham. Goal is here between Portsmouth and Cheltenham on BBC Radio Solent Sport. And O'Shaughnessy will go back to Scott Brown, all in yellow, former Eastley goalkeeper. Goes long, and he would have found the head there of right, but it's beyond him. And through to David Ford. as a little bit of ticker tape scattered inside Ford's box. And Guy Pompey in possession, but not quite cutting Cheltenham open at the moment. No, not yet. Uh, Cheltenham are alive. They're, you know, they're working hard at the moment. Um, as we've seen plenty of times before, Pompey hope that uh, you know eventually somebody somewhere along the line loses concentration and they can capitalise on it. But it's it's a patient game from Pompey. You can't get frustrated because they've got a lot of play. Look to get into good positions. They've got to keep their movement up. They've got to keep the tempo of the game up. Cheltenham have picked up 11 points from their past six games. That make, means they are one of the form teams in the division. And they just needed that little boost because they were in danger of heading straight back to the National League had they not found a bit of form. Bennett to Baker, 40 yards out trying to play Naismith through in the penalty area. He's pushed right wide to the left-hand side. Now Stevens crossed to the near post. Enough red and white shirts there for Cheltenham to clear. Looking for Pell, that's going to test him. And even his six-foot-seven frame can't keep that ball in. 
Blue Army chants continue all the way around. Let's try and look and see if we can see Mr Eisner in the director's box down in front of us. He had a blue cap on. See Ian McInnes and barring a strange set of events, this would be McInnes's final match as Portsmouth chairman. Crew one, Barnet nil. No influence at either end of the table in that game as Davis will head that one out of play for a pumpy throw. Liam Davis was signed from the Swedish side. I think it's Gase, you said. It's a Gothenburg team. I'll be honest, I'd never heard of them. Can't imagine there'd be too many Gothenburg to Cheltenham moves. But he was one of them. He's done OK so far. Now Cheltenham have been opened up and there's space down that left-hand side, but Naismith just can't keep it in and it runs away for a Cheltenham throw. Should be worth saying, it is good to see Gary Johnson back in better health guy after a, a hard operation back in March. Yep, he's, uh, you know, he's one of the hard-working uh, managers that are in the leagues at the moment, had plenty of clubs, success at some and not at others, but certainly a man who loves and knows his football. Said the job has kept him sane during the difficulties. It's a poor ball from Baker straight to Harry Pell, who gets his head down and runs forward and runs straight into Baker. That's and what people here like. Baker gives the ball away, then runs another 20 yards to get it back. But Pompey can't do anything with it, and Cheltenham try and come forward. His waters out to this left-hand side. Davis tries to go down the touchline, looking there for the run of right. Burgess, who's another man who picked up some player of the season awards, saw the ball forward, and then Portsmouth will be brought back for a free kick in midfield. David Ford runs out of his goal to shout something at Christian Burgess that he's not happy. And Burgess, in his usual laid-back turn, just turns around and nods. 0-0. Pompey get things going again. Doyle switches to the far side. Stevens has to nod it in field. That's good play from Ender Stevens. That's great play into the area. Across to Chaplin, steps over it. Davis covering well. And he'll go behind for a corner. Yeah, well, good play by Stevens, obviously, in that far post. Cushioned the ball with his head, then took two men on, beat them. Pull back was for Chaplin. Chaplin realised he wasn't going to get a shot off. Let it run. But it was good defending by Davis, I think, in the end. Pompey putting a bit of pressure on. Nil-nil the score. Crawley nil, Mansfield won. Mansfield can still make the playoffs. They need a lot of help. Great ball into the penalty area. That's a good header away from Harry Powell. We talked about this size. And we talked about Johnson's set pieces and all the ways Pompey can hurt teams. Cheltenham are going to be thinking they can't let it happen from a set piece. Waters trying to lead a counter-attack down the left. The blue shirts have got back in good numbers, though. Was there a foul committed there by Doyle? No, says the referee. And Chaplin will pick up possession on the right-hand side. He's side down by a legal challenge from Davis and go out for a Pompey throw, which Chaplin takes quickly. I think Evans would have rather been left to him to take. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was about to catch that then. Just shows the tempo, the boys want to play the game at the players out on the pitch. It's been non-stop singing from the Pompey fans so far. Burgess bringing it up towards halfway. Evans tries to step in field, away from one challenge, then from another. Evans, 40 yards out, centrally placed. Still moving across the pitch and towards the goal. Thought about a shot on his left foot, that was going to take something very special. But it's found Stevens on the left, great early cross to the near post, and a terrible own goal! Daniel O'Shaughnessy has just sliced one in at the near post. He scored at the right end earlier in the season against Portsmouth. Now he's put through his own net. And a gift for Portsmouth. They lead Cheltenham. Pompey won. Cheltenham now. Well, I don't know if it's lack of concentration or, you know, whether he took his eye off the ball, whatever it is. It's flashed off his... It looks like it's his shin. And gone into the back of the net again, the goalkeeper, no chance. It, it looked an easy clearance. Maybe the uh, it surprised him how quickly it skipped off the surface because, you know, as we've seen on plenty of occasions here at Fratton Park, Paul Cook does like it watered a lot before the game starts, and that seems to have what caught him out. Paul Cook just has to run onto the pitch to grab an inflatable globe. But, wow, that's a gift, isn't it? And O'Shaughnessy said the keeper with no chance. I'm not sure Chapman was going to get that ball behind him even if he left it. No, I, I think the keeper might have shouted for it. I think he was really, really annoyed with the Sean because I think, I think he might have shouted it to come through to him. It wasn't, it wasn't getting to Chaplin. It was the wrong angle. 
So as things stand in the live league table, Portsmouth are top because they're winning. Doncaster are drawing and Plymouth are losing. Who would have thought this when Doncaster had 17 points on Plymouth or Portsmouth back in February? They've really dropped away since they secured promotion. <laughs> they've, they've been having a party, that's for sure. I guess ultimately, as we said, whether you win the title or not, the job's done for next season. No one wants to end a season the way how they have, but they'd settle for this if they were offered it. Oh, everybody would. Blackpool lead Leighton Orient 1 0. And Blackpool are one of the two sides alongside them and Carlisle who have their playoff fate in their own hands to join Luton and Exeter. So as things stand, Blackpool and Stevenage have the last two playoff spots. Portsmouth would win the title and Newport would relegate Hartlepool. 15 gone, 1-0 to Pompey here. Terrible own goal from O'Shaughnessy. Pompey in control. One in midfield by James Rowe and O'Shaughnessy makes a bit of a mistake there. And it's a throw to Pompey on the left. Well, there seems to be a real determination from the Pompey players, isn't there? Every one of them are chasing lost causes, harrying the ball, putting... The charting them under pressure when they get the ball they're playing smartly they're playing with a big tempo do you have that end of term feel in games like this guy as a, as a player um, I think what they want to do I think they want to really go out on a bang for the for the supporters it, it looks that way for me yeah. I say for the supporters first and foremost for themselves you know then your teammates um, the club and then the supporters that you know Particularly as one of the two of these, it might be your final game for the club. I'm not sure too many of the starting 11, but you never know. Yeah, you never know, do you? We'll wait and see on that one, but whatever it is, they've started tremendously well this game. Bennett loses out. Pell picks it up and finds Rowe in midfield for Cheltenham. Pompey one up as all oh, Michael Doyle slides in there. And Baker out to this right-hand side. Connor Chaplin into the penalty area, good play from Chapman, the shot is fumbled by the goalkeeper who gathers at the second attempt, Chapman's determined to get that goal He today. is and he's determined, he's, he's coming on this right hand side, that's three times now and the first time he's got a shot off if I was uh, if I was Davis, I'd be pretty switched on to making sure I show him down the line not inside Brown goes long, Clark wins a header, Doyle flattened by Pell he won't forget that one and a long ball forward and Naismith's chasing and he's got the legs on the defender but he is just shielded away by O'Shaughnessy and Brown clears long Burgess wins the header at the back 1-0 Pompey lead Stevens in all kinds of time and space in the left back position forward to Chaplin he's found a pocket of space on a halfway and then to Baker and Baker tries to get Bennett away down the left the flag goes up and I think he had gone a fraction early there yeah, that's, that's something that frustrates you a little bit, doesn't it? Because, well, there's 40 yards of space there and he didn't need to go that early with his pace. Perhaps the most important thing I can say now Pompey have this 1-0 lead is we're desperately trying to break a curse this afternoon because Ian Wilding hasn't seen Portsmouth win at Fratton Park. Well, the last manager, I'll give you a clue, guy, the last manager you saw win was a striker who was hard, harshly sacked. <laughs> is, um, is that a clue? Mm. Can you hmm. think that might be? Well, I know the striker is. Whether it's Harsley sacked or not is debatable. <laughs> Log ball to the edge of the penalty area. It comes off. Cal Nace was head out for throw. It was when Ports would beat Berry by goal to nil with a Bonds and Gala header from an early corner. I'm sure you remember that one, Guy. Yeah. You have to remember the ones you win, that's for sure. Throw to Cheltenham down by the corner flag. 2013 that game by the way and Cheltenham were going to launch a long throw throw Shaughnessy into the box loopy one to the near post always oh, flicked on and bouncing around in a real chance and it's blocked by Naismith Pompey getting a touch fortunate there the second effort's blocked as well and then Baker hooks it away I think it's Burgess's backside that blocks it I'm not sure how much he knew about that it was heading in yeah a bit of a scramble Pompey back in numbers got a block in Up the Football League we go is being sung out. Remember, we have got feeds of the Doncaster and Plymouth games in our studio, so we'll bring you goal flashes faster than you'll get anywhere else on the radio this afternoon. Plymouth are one down, Doncaster nil-nil. Doyle slides in. Maybe Cheltenham would rather have the free kick. Shot from distance and Ford, not the most convincing save, but he got his body behind it and it's still 1-0 to Pompey. Yeah, because he got down late, it looked like he'd seen it late. Um, 
However, he saved it, he saved it, and more importantly, he kept hold of it as well, because there was a, was a Cheltenham striker looking to pick up the scraps. Here's Rose in the centre of midfield. 1-0, and O'Shaughnessy own goal for Pompey. That ball slightly behind Ender Stevens, but he jogs back to retrieve it and now looks to try and take on the fullback. Cranston's really a left back playing at right back. Here's Chaplin, left corner of the area, skip past one challenge, then the ball ricochets away from him. And Pell picks it up and tries to drive forward. Cheltenham aren't overawed by this game, they've come to play. And there's a positive intent about them as Evans steals in and wins the ball on this near right hand side. Forward to Naismith. 30 yards out, Naismith into the area, Chaplin just wanted to be played in and Naismith, well, dithered on the ball for a moment, Chaplin goes down in the box, but that was a legitimate challenge and Cheltenham will get it away. Well, just as Chaplin isn't going to pass to Naismith anywhere near around the, <laughs> around the goal area, I think Naismith is exactly the same. Both of them got eyes on the goal. 1-0 the score, BBC Radio Solent Sport, Michael Eisner in the building today, watching... And don't forget, if you missed any of our interview, we sat down with him for 10 minutes on Wednesday, or the PST shareholder meeting with him, both are available on the BBC iPlayer. You can look back on at Solent Sport on Twitter to find them. Here comes Davis forward for Cheltenham. Baker steps in and wins it. And Baker clears it down the right-hand side. Not been read by Naismith, though. And that's going to go all the way through to... Scott Brown, a man who had nine years here between 2005 and 2014. We're on our way as sung out as Burgess wins a header. It's, it's just worth pointing out, Plymouth losing, Doncaster drawing, but I can't imagine Hartlepool Doncaster will end as a draw because it does no, no favours for either of them. Hartlepool will be down with a draw and as things stand, Doncaster won't win the title with a draw. Someone think he's going to get a goal at some point in that game. Here is Danny Rose. Lifts it forward, looking for the run of Bennett down that left-hand side. Should be dealt with by Cranston. Oh, Bennett steals it from Cranston and will drive into the area. Chaplin wants it. Bennett might go himself. Bennett to Chaplin, force wide, tries to get the shot in block behind corner kick. Yeah, well, Bennett read the touch of the fullback really well there. He was beaten for pace. But then he knew the fullback was going to touch it in front of him and rob the ball off him. Sprinted inside, Chaplin there, support. Just couldn't work the angle to get a shot off for the corner. Baker's going to send a right-footed in swinger. Chaplin moves to the near post. Then it's lifted in towards the far. Burgess almost could, has time to take it down and then he tries to hack it goalwards. It's the finish of a centre-half. Doyle from distance, really connected with it, but high and wide, 1-0. Yeah, well, we've seen the spectacular from Doyle, haven't we? So, you never know from him, from what, how far was that, 35 yards? But going back to the corner, I mean, I mean Burgess has got all the time in the world when the ball comes to him, you know, but as soon as you take that touch, you are going to be closed down. And although he got a shot off, it was a weak one that was cleared. Those aren't the goal centre-half score from corners when they take it down and no, bury it no, in the he, corner. He, he should have hit that first time, whether it was a volley, whether it was a stupid header. Not stupid header, stupid header. <laughs> Crawley nil, Mansfield two. Mansfield, though, still needing help elsewhere to make the playoffs. Shot from distance comes in, and it's just over the bar from Billy Waters, but it did get a Pompey deflection on the way behind, so off for a corner on the left-hand side. Well, they're not shutting up shop and uh, stopping and everything and just giving possession to Portsmouth, are they, John? They're having to go themselves. What's that, three or four shots now they've had? And also, they, there's nothing for them to lose. They, they did their, the hard work last week for them. That victory against Hartlepool was the key one. That secured... Yeah, yeah. you know, a club like Cheltenham, you know, with the fans they get, the area they're in, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit like Yeovil. It's a remarkable achievement. It's, it's real success to stay in the league. The budgets they've got. And they've done that this season. Corner kick to come in. Row right-footed, in-swinger, deep towards the far post. It's well worked. Oof. And Rose just got something on it because there was a player coming in round the back unmarked. And if Rose doesn't get a touch in it, I think he gets a shot away. Yeah, I think Rose lost him momentarily. And then when he looked back, the ball was right by him and he just got a deflection on it that took away from the attacking player. 1-0 the lead and O'Shaughnessy own goal. As things stand, a quarter way through the game, a long way to go. Pompey are heading towards the League 2 title, which I believe the trophy will be awarded to them tomorrow. There's a celebration 
at on Southsea tomorrow, but also tomorrow here at Fratton Park. You might want some more football and do come down and support the Pompey ladies. Two o'clock kick off their game against QPR. Four pounds for adults, two pounds for concessions. Really cheap tickets and a really good chance to come down and support Pompey ladies. Great for them to get to play on Fratton Park. Probably before it gets, I'd say, ripped up. I don't know what the grounds would exactly... I don't know if the grounds would call it ripping up, but his, his work begins for the summer. Yeah, there's a Portsmouth Cup final here as well. I think it's the 22nd. Haven't against Petersfield, and I've, I've talked to the groundsman, and he said the pitch will be very brown by then. <laughs> <laughs> will it be watered heavily before? Well, I don't know. Pompey won themselves a free kick down here on this near right-hand side. And there's applause because Ian McInnes has stood up in the director's box and is being warmly applauded by all supporters around the ground for his contribution he's made to the club and he's blowing kisses to the Fratton end and applause from within the director's box and he shakes hand, I think that's Chris Moth to his right it's like their time as directors is going to be coming to an end in successful fashion Pompey prepare this free kick, Bennett to the edge of the box Baker's come round, takes a touch, will hit it deflected, it's going to go wide and behind for a corner, well worked yeah, well worked free kick Lined up as if it's going to ball is going to be put in that danger area across that six yard box. Baker makes the run right from the back, comes to the D. The, door, the ball's reversed to the D. He took a touch, which was intelligent, got himself a bit more space, got his shot off, but deflected. 1 0, corner taken short to Bennett by Baker. Bennett back to Baker, whips it into the near post. Poor ball, easily headed away by Holman. Doyle picks it up 40 yards out. A few cries of shoot. Dummy from the referee to let the ball go through to Chaplin, now the ball's whipped in and Naismith just tries to glance ahead header on, gets too much on it over the bar behind, goal kick 1-0 Yeah, with the pace of that ball just need the faintest touch didn't it, to get it offline from where the goalkeeper was but still keep it on target too heavy a touch on it Swansea won Everton nil in the late Premier League kickoff. Lorente, I believe because of Hull's loss at home to Sunderland, a Swansea win would get them out of the relegation zone this evening could be all change at the bottom. I got that statistic right. That makes a nice change. The League Two table, if you read the list of permutations for the playoffs, you'd take about two days to read them. Here's Chaplin trying to feed Bennett back into the penalty area. Quick Pompey break is broken up by Cheltenham. who then have it through James Rowe at the back. Man who spent a year in the Southampton Academy. Hasn't got him any booze as of yet. I thought the assistant on the far side was flagging for a foul but it was a, someone waving a banana behind him so no free kick ball towards the edge of the Pompey penalty area Clark will just head it out and Cheltenham win themselves a throw down on the right hand side level with the aerial yeah Danny Rose there just instigating that press the very quick once they I think he's he's the main instigator once he recognizes that the opposition have got possession at the back and there's an opportunity to go and press he forces everybody else up the pitch Crew to Barnet nil on the few games without anything riding on it. Clark at the back turns away skillfully from trouble and then Rose slips over. So Pompey lose possession. Good strength shown by Boyle to hold it off Chaplin. And then Rose loses possession. Doyle flies in with the challenge. Waters has it 30 yards out coming forward. And then gonna hit it left footed and doesn't really catch it and through to Ford. No, but he's had two or three of those now, hasn't he? And he has to catch one right and force with a you know, they're not, they're not stopping him from going forward and getting that shot off from, what, 20 yards. We've just lost, careful. lost listeners, on, lo, uh, listeners on Dorset frequencies at 9.99am. Pompey with a chance to cross it from the left. Poor ball from Naismith. It will come back for a free kick 40 yards out. Stereo Underground starting on Dorset frequencies 9.99am and Freeview 734. But here on Digital Radio in Hampshire, 96.1 FM and Freeview 722, we will, of course, be sticking to the conclusion of this game we are 28 minutes in Portsmouth lead Cheltenham by a goal to nil I believe there is to be a lap of honour at the end that's assuming there's not a pitch invasion and when I arrived the stewards were rehearsing how they're going to try and stop a pitch invasion good luck to them Doncaster just have a goal disallowed at Hartlepool so still nil nil there and Plymouth still behind to Grimsby remember the fastest news of any goals on BBC Radio Solent this afternoon telling you what happens elsewhere so Doncaster's goal disallowed means Pompey are still on for the League 2 title now they've changed their mind it's been allowed goal given Doncaster lead away at Hartlepool 
they're still debating it. I think they've made the decision. Goal given to Doncaster. Definitely a goal for Doncaster. They lead Hartley for 1-0. And as things stand, that will be enough to win the title for them and to relegate Hartley Paul United to the non-league. And I see Ian Wilding puts his head in his hands because that means Eastley will have another trip to the northeast next season if that stays as it is. But as Paul Cook said, all Pompey can do is win their game here. Still a long way to go. And they would leap above Plymouth, if nothing else. I can't believe Naismith is shaping up to shoot. This is 45 yards out, this free kick. Left of centre. Naismith is going to hit this over the wall. And it's still rising and it lands somewhere in the Milton end. Back to the drawing board. Not quite sure what he was looking to do then. He was trying to almost float it, but you've got to drill I, it from there, surely. I can understand when you, you know, we, we've seen the way that uh, free kicks are taken now, don't we? When the ball's hit and it doesn't rotate at all and therefore wobbles. But that, uh, you got that horribly wrong. 1 0 Pompey lead. Luton 1, Morecambe 0. X to 1, Carlisle 1. That wouldn't be enough, I don't believe, to keep Carlisle in the playoffs. But Luton would keep fourth place if they win against Morecambe. Now Cheltenham have got a free kick in from the right, 10 yards inside Pompey territory. And it's going to be whipped in by Rowe. And in fact, no, he takes it short, but that's horribly gone wrong for Cheltenham. They've just gifted possession straight to Portsmouth. And suddenly the centre-halves aren't too grateful. They have to sprint back to try and get themselves into position. And the crossfield ball finds Baker on halfway on this near right-hand side. Finds Naismith. Naismith coming in field. Still moving Naismith. And Naismith plays it square. Stevens over on that left-hand side. 30 yards out. And Pompey just knocking it around. They lead by a goal tinder on BBC Radio Solent Sport. Stevens. Sees his pass intercepted and now Cheltenham will try and launch a breakaway. Rowe running at pace. He's got Waters to his left. Looks back to his right-hand side. Pels in space and the ball just skips off Ender Stevens and it goes out for a throw on that far side. There's a bit of pace about Cheltenham when they come forward. Yeah, when they have the opportunity, don't they? And there's space in front of them. They do, uh, you know, he's done it. Rowe's done it. Pels done it. Waters has done it when they go and tack that space. Waters further up the pitch has had a couple of shots from it. Short to the lanky figure of Pell, signed from Eastleigh last summer. Here's Cheltenham once more, left alone to Davis on this left hand side, trying to go round the outside of Evans. Did the first bit but wasn't balanced enough to get a cross that stayed in play and it's behind and it's a goal kick away to the left hand side. Ford will take a goal kick. Connor Chapman just comes and takes some fluids on. As things stand, Pompey will have to settle for second in League Two. The net result, of course, is, well, the same. Although there is a great stat that I have to credit Chris Wise for, that if Portsmouth did win League Two, they'd become the fifth club to win all four divisions of English football. I know you enjoy stats like that, Guy. Very impressive from Chris Wise. As Baker flicks it on. See, I could have just passed it off as my own there. He'll be surprised you didn't. <laughs> he probably will be. 1-0 the score. Cheltenham with the throw on halfway down in front of us. Cheltenham with just four away wins all season, but the home form good enough to keep them in League Two. It is Hartlepool who are heading out as things stand. As Doyle slides in and wins it and finds Rose. And Stevens looks to go long. Bennett is coming from the right wing to the left to chase and O'Shaughnessy just drops his shoulder and will play it forward and Cheltenham try and get going again. Look where Newport won Notts County now. Look where Rose and, and Doyle were then. You know, they were as the as the centre backs had it, they were ten yards away, running towards them, pressing. They certainly haven't done that all season. No, it's Crawley won Mansfield two. 
Oh, given away to Cheltenham. They have it 30 yards out. Shot comes in. Deflected. Ford makes a good initial save. The rebound still in the penalty area. Waters again. Plenty of red and white shirts forward. Chance for a shot from Rose. Curls it just wide. Inches away. Ford unhappy. Goal kick still 1-0. Well, is, is that off the back of you know, Rose and Doyle pushing up the pitch, leaving that space there? If, they, if they're doing that, the centre-halves have got to get further up because Cheltenham are getting good possession just in front of the centre-halves. That space there that Rose and Doyle have been vacating. As I said, I've asked numerous people about the changing role of Doyle and Rose, but everyone is insisting they haven't changed anything. It's not always visually obvious. As Naismith tries to sit Chaplin away down the left, offside, flag goes up. Crowd behind the assistant on this near side don't like that decision. But it is a free kick to Cheltenham inside their own half. 35 gone. 1-0 to Portsmouth. Paul Cook, remember, insisting that retain list is going to include no surprises. I guess the battle for Portsmouth is to be able to keep the likes of Carl Bennett and Ender Stevens. Also fascinating what will happen to the likes of Adam May. Long ball into the Pompey. Penalty area is just beyond right. If he'd gone at it with his head, I think he might have got there. Adam May, Ben Close, who haven't really been anywhere near the first team this season. Amin Linganzi up as well. I think Adam May and Ben Close, um, you know, have gone out on loan, which is what they need to do. Obviously, Adam May with the run that Sutton had has... Uh, has had a bit of uh, media coverage, but great learning experience for them. Will they play in League One? And that's what we'll have to wait to find out. Long ball forward down the left by Pompey, chested on brilliantly by Bennett. A back heel from Naismith back to Bennett, corner of the penalty area, cuts one way than the other Bennett. Then fight looks for Chaplin, gets the ball back, still bouncing around in the area, and Cheltenham will hammer it clear. I think that's... And you also look at someone like Jack Watmore. I'm sure Pompey want to keep Jack Watmore, and I, I would think there's a really good chance he'll stay, but you look at him and he, he's got to get some, yeah. some some starting games under his belt. He does, yeah. He needs he needs some football. He needs to keep clear of injury. He was back in the side, wasn't he? And then and then got injured, which allowed Clark back in. And Clark, you have to say, since then, has played magnificently well. Clark and Burgess still very much under contract for next season, and you would say... Well, be the starting defensive pair you would think and I think as much as anything it's the balance that Burgess and Clark are because obviously Burgess right footed and Clark left footed Naismith on the left tees it up Bennett to hit it drops his shoulder now tries to curl it in palmed away by Brown and cleared Baker's Baker's been screaming for this ball on the right hand side the last three attacks that Porter have had when they've had the ball on the left hand side inside the box Overcovering defenders has left him a bit of space, but he hasn't got the ball. Colchester one, Yeovil nil. Colchester another side on the outside, looking in the playoffs. That could be a big goal for them. Bennett gives it away, and it's picked up the back by James Rowe once more. Carl Stora will clear it forward. Carl Stora became a father to baby George earlier in this week. Congratulations to him and Natalie, his fiance. As Pompey look to have their own celebrations, title celebrations. Doncaster currently denying them that. Pompey are doing their bit though. They're winning by a goal to nil. Seven and a half minutes to go in control of this game. Earlier on today we brought you commentary of Bournemouth 2 Stoke 2 Bournemouth getting the point they needed to mathematically ensure they would have a place in the Premier League again next season not that it was in all that much doubt but put your calculators away because they're safe Pompey we've known for some time will be in League 1 next season As Cheltenham win themselves a throw and a number of people in the director's box head in for whatever refreshments they might be getting at half-time. So that goal for Colchester has lifted them above Stevenage, and as things stand, it'll be Colchester in seventh place. Blackpool, wi Blackpool winning, and if Blackpool win, they will finish sixth. That was the playoffs implication. Plymouth losing, Doncaster winning. So Doncaster on course for the title, unless Hartlepool can get one back. Brown. 
will clear long Clark wins a header but then it bounces back off Wright's head and then Rowe battles for a ball in the centre of midfield it's then played out to this left hand side and Davis comes forward attacks the space in field finds Rowe who's been busy with his hair held back in an Alice band I think that's the terminology I'm not really that au that fait with these kind of things Pell switching play towards Cranston the left back playing on the right down the touchline looking for support from Wright who slipped but at least wins himself a throw well it's a good bit of possession by Cheltenham isn't it not overall by the occasion at all they've they look confident they're willing to run the ball they've risked a few passes and now they're keeping possession well having said that they just lose it Pompey leading by a goal to nil Blackpool too late in Orient nil lovely run from Chaplin he's gone 50 yards with it there's only O'Shaughnessy to beat still going Chaplin tries to go past one more challenge falls to the ground doesn't get a free kick he was heading down anyway and Christopher Sargent and the referee not interested yeah it was a good run wasn't it what 60-70 yards right to the edge of the 18 yard box when he cut inside his right foot and just made sure he made contact with the, uh, with the defender free kick on halfway given away by James Rowe or given away by Naismith on James Rowe I should say Connor Chaplin still not happy that he didn't get himself a free kick and the referee is just telling him to calm down it remains 1-0 to Portsmouth. As I said, fastest news of goals at Hartlepool and Grimsby comes on BBC Radio Solent Sport this afternoon. Pompey currently on their best ever run under Paul Cook. 28 points from the last 11 games. Incredible stuff. Ball into the Pompey penalty area is a good one. And at the far post, Stevens has to hook it away from Pell. It'll go behind. And goal kick has been awarded. Well, it was a tantalising ball, wasn't it, for forwards? Two of them almost got on the end of it, right and Pelt. And he was in that area where Ford couldn't come and claim it and the, the defenders couldn't get there. It was a tremendous ball in. But not that good because nobody finished it. That's very true. <laughs> Ford puts the ball down for the goal kick to be taken. A few people around us just... Head into the concourses ahead of half time. What's your guess for the size of the crowd then, Andrew? I'm going to say 18,500. Oh, wow. Certainly full, isn't it? It's a short. It is, and I know capacity is reduced in theory at the moment, but it is only a small corner. It can only be in the matter of a few hundred seats over there. It's over on the far side. Danny Wright coming in one way than the other, and that's going behind for a goal kick. Producer Carl asking what the guess for tomorrow at the I think there's going to be a good 10,000 people rocking up in South Sea tomorrow. I'm not sure it's going to be the 200,000 that supposedly watched the FA Cup final parade, although I'm always a bit wary of how on earth you work out how many people are, are along an open-top bus parade. What's, what was the reason they couldn't go to the Good Hall? Uh, probably people still st stuck there from ISIS meeting <laughs> on Thursday, still queuing up to ask questions, I think. No, I don't know. That's a, it's a good point, actually. I think there is a, there's a formal civic reception on Monday, but I think that is a behind-closed-door event. Now oh, they're organising that then, I presume. I believe so. I've, my invite hasn't come, is all I'd say. Is it not? No. <laughs> I'm making the tea, apparently. My tea-making skills I'm, are a little I'm bit limited. Sweeping. You're doing the sweeping. Well, the main thing is... There's a fair few Pompey players who certainly didn't have anything booked for the next couple of weeks because they thought they were going to build it building up potentially at one point to the playoffs. Don't have to worry about that this year. Brown being chased by Naismith. Clears beyond halfway. Pell tries to bring it down. Can't do so. Out of play. Pompey throw on the far side the left. 1-0, two and a half to the break. Stevens to Doyle, who smashes it forward. Loses it initially, but Rose, his partner in crime in midfield, is there to win it. Forward, looking for Bennett. Went away from one challenge. And then Cranston almost ran into trouble. But with his favoured left foot, tried to clear, and he now is in trouble because Nace was heading in the penalty area. Bennett on the edge, he's got Chaplin to look for. Now Baker on the overlap, looking for Baker. Pompey just can't work out where to move the ball here. And it's blocked the cross, and it has to go back to Evans. Coming inside from 30 yards out. And now to Rose, and Pompey will try and build again. Evans, 1-0 the lead, Radio Solent Sport.
Baker, or Baker gives it away. And now there might be a Cheltenham counter-attack, but for once there aren't too many players high up the pitch. Wright is going to do it all on his own. Now he looks to try and play a ball in, and Stevens, did he trip his man? Holman, no. Play on, says the referee. I thought it was a huge opportunity for Naismith at the other end. This might be another opportunity for him because he's in behind on the left. Chaplin's there, he can play it square. Chaplin! Oh, he just can't get enough on it. And it's into the Milton end behind. No goal, 1 0. Chaplin frustrated, I think, and probably furious with Naismith. That should have been a goal. Naismith, when he squared that ball, put it far too far in front of Chaplin with his small legs. He couldn't get there. He slid in and did his best, but I mean, that's, that's, well, that's disappointing. Disappointing for, for Chaplin, that's for sure. Scampering is how I'd describe Chaplin's right. And to be fair, Naismith was down on his haunches because he knows he should have gifted Chaplin a goal there. As it was, it's still 1 0. Cheltenham try and come forward. Evans, though, wins it. And Evans drives up towards halfway to Naismith. Oh, that's a terrible touch. Half time, Grimsby lead Plymouth by a goal to nil. Still playing here, Pompey one up, but on the left wing, Cheltenham have it, down towards the byline now. Couple of step overs into the penalty area, lays it up, Rowe with a chance, deflected and over the bar. Great opportunity. It was a good opportunity, and they can't rest on the laurels, Portsmouth. Cheltenham are causing a few problems this half. Especially the centre midfield players bursting through and getting shots off target. That time Rowe getting the area, Dorr was furious that he's been allowed to run in there and marked. Deflection to get over the bar. But that half time, Hart, 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 Hartley Paul Neil Doncaster one. They're going to have that luck all the game, Portsmouth. If they don't defend better than that, Chuck, we're going to score. Very hard to disagree with it, and Pompey must be alert from these set pieces. One minute of added time, we're into that now. Rose right footed in, swing and corner, goes in deep towards the far post. Heads go up, Burgess stands firm. Good header away from Burgess. Liam Davis, the left back, will gather. And Davis launches in towards the penalty area, bouncing around. Pompey win it, and Pompey might be able to break away here. And Chaplin's going to have to sprint. Can he get there ahead of Cranston? Slides in, but Cranston had a bit more force in the challenge, and it's a throw in. Had that been played better, then Chaplin might have got himself on the end. And that's a bit of smart game management there. From the touchline, Pompey players are just told, take your time, don't rush. 1-0 is the score. Exeter have gone 2-1 up against Carlisle at home. Carlisle, just remember when we went there at the end of February, as the half-time whistle goes here, Pompey are 1-0 up. When we went to Brunton Park, had Carlisle won, they'd have gone nine clear of Pompey. They're going to finish about 17 points adrift. So then... At half-time, Pompey keeping their end of the bargain up. They're beating Cheltenham by a goal to nil. Grimsby are doing Pompey a favour. They're beating Plymouth, but Doncaster winning away at Hartlepool. If you just look down in the director's box, because we know Michael Eisner is here somewhere today. I haven't seen him in the ground as yet. Underway, BBC Radio Solent Sport. Portsmouth 1, Cheltenham nil. Second half commentary with myself and Guy Whittingham. Oh, a slip there from Cranston, almost gifted Carl Bennett possession. But Cheltenham have it at the back. Oh, they give it away to Doyle. And now Chaplin picks it up. Chaplin, can he play Naismith in? Chaplin, he's still going himself. To the right, Baker. Naismith waiting at the far post. Chaplin wants to pull back. Baker slips, shoots with his left foot and saved. Yeah, I think Chaplin released the ball far too early for Baker. It made the defender, didn't have to come and close Chaplin down. He could get back to Baker. If Chaplin had drawn the defender in, Baker was away on his own. Give you the two lineups in a moment, but no changes from either side at the interval. 1-0. Here's Portsmouth lead. Cheltenham just about keep the ball in play on the far side. They're kicking from left to right in their red and white striped shirts, black shorts and black socks. Pompey going from right to left as we look in our position in the back of the south stand. That's towards the Fratton end. I think I can see one of Eisner's sons down there. No sign of the man himself yet. 17,956. Here's the attendance today, 545 away fans. If Shaughnessy will launch it long towards the Pompey penalty area. Oh, Stevens play it forward, Cranston with a header. Cheltenham still in possession. Again, hooked down towards the penalty area. Clark is under it. Not sure why he didn't. Well, I guess he couldn't quite let it bounce. It might not have gone out of play. So he had to play it. And now Cheltenham pick it up through the dominating figure of Harry Pell 
That's a terrible crossfield ball, though. And Davis has to sprint back 30 yards to try and keep it in. And he just about does that. As Chaplin scampering around to chase. And Boyle will go back towards the goalkeeper. Milan Laukovic in his club suit down there. Back from his lone spell in Scotland. Cranston, the left back, trying to play his way out of trouble there. Man side from Gateshead a year ago. Up in the air, the ball bouncing around. Now on this right hand side, Pell has it. I'll give you those lineups in full. That's going to go through towards David Ford, the Portsmouth goalkeeper. He gathers. The back fours Gareth Evans, Christian Burgess, Matt Clark, and Ender Stevens. Danny Rose and Michael Dawes sit behind Carl Baker, Cal Naismith, and Carl Bennett. Connor Chaplin's the lone striker. Pompey breaking forward down the left hand side. Poor ball from Bennett. Easy for Cranston to intercept from Naismith. O'Brien, Roberts, Kabamba, Watmore, Lowe, Linganzi, and Abora are your substitutes for Pompey. Evans will go back to the green clad David Ford. 1 0 the Pompey lead throws Shaughnessy's own goal. It's been a bit of a frantic start to this second half. Surely a push by Cranston on Naismith. Guy, there's just perhaps not that cohesion going forward for Pompey that we have seen at times. No, not yet. Um, I think they've had I think they've created opportunities to score goals. Just haven't had the final pass, the final shoot like we saw there with, with Chaplin, just playing that ball at the wrong time. And again, a minute later with Bennett. Here he expecting is. Naismith to be on the charge, but he wasn't, he wanted the ball square. 1 2 with Ender Stevens. Now Bennett gets to the byline, back onto his right foot, lays it up. Naismith takes a touch, tries to turn away from trouble again. Ends up on his face in the penalty area, but the challenge is a good one, and Cheltenham can clear. Yeah, I don't know why and Naismith then expected so much time in the air. It was a bit like Burgess in the first half, wasn't it? When he got, you know, took the ball down in the area, expecting to have plenty of time for his second touch. You just don't get that. If you have that, if you have the first touch, you've got to do quick, something quickly with your second one, even at this level. Doyle switches play to Rose, out to the right-hand side. Evans has it, Evans twisting and turning, lifted in towards the near post. Lovely ball, Naismith can only chest it down and can't keep it in play either. And it's behind for a goal kick to our left. Cheltenham with Brown in goal, Jordan Cranston, Will Boyle, Daniel O'Shaughnessy, Liam Davis, the back four, Harry Pell, Carl Storer, James Rowe, Billy Waters in midfield, Danny Wright and Dan Holman up front, Callum Kitchka, Jack Bathroom, Aaron Downs, Jack Munns, Carl Wooten, James Dayton and Carl Winchester are the substitutes. And 1-0 is the Pompey lead and you're listening to BBC Radio Solent Sport. Pell lays it off to the right. Holman, lovely cross, headed down and wide. What a good opportunity for Cheltenham. And Wright may well slap the ground in frustration. He yeah, should have scored. Should have scored. I think Burgess just did enough to put him off as he was coming back into position. He'd come to the edge of the box to try and uh, to try and win the ball. And he was just uh, he threw his arms out looking at Clark. Clark had come far too far past the near post. Wasn't aware that Wright had pulled off him. Good delivery in. Wright should have scored. But his stooping header, he didn't get a good connection and it goes wide. I don't think he needed a good connection. He was not far enough out. So had he managed to find the bottom corner, I don't think Ford would have had the time to get there. But still 1-0 remains the score. But remember, as things stand, Doncaster winning the league because they're winning away at Hartlepool. Naismith, 30 yards from goal, twisting and turning. Naismith to the feet of Chaplin, turns, out to the left-hand side, Rose, back to Baker, corner of the penalty area, Baker still going, to the feet of Rose, good play from Pompey, Rose tries to stand it up, easy for O'Shaughnessy to head away, and suddenly there's a Cheltenham break on here, and there's space on the right. Well, Pompey had six players in the box when that ball came across, you don't usually get that many from Pompey, do you, in all the games we've seen? As Stevens has just wiped out Holman down the left, and it's going to go into the book for that one. No arguments there. One for the team. One of those ones from Edna Stevens. Quick counter attack as Paul. That's had seven players up the pitch. He had a counter attack against three. Stevens recovering really well, really quickly, and slowing the game down for his teammates. One nil the score. James Rowe, former Forest Green man, is sent out to the touchline to take it. Also an ex Cranmere player. Two of the sides battling to be in the Football League next season. Now the cross comes into the area, it's flicked on. Naismith there to hook away. Pompey front leader, a counter-attack. 50-50 between Doyle 
and Rowe, which Doyle won unsurprisingly. It's probably 60-40 in his favour. Cranston plays it forward. Clark puts his knees together to control the ball and then hoofs it long. 1-0 the score. Clark wins another header. Cheltenham trying to come forward and they found a bit of space. Here's Holman away from one challenge and another and then tries to curl it past Ford. It's a great save down to his right by the Irishman in a corner. Oh, I think he left it late, didn't he? I think he thought, is that going in or isn't it? I better cover just in case. We can't quite see where this angle, whether it was creeping in that far post, but it was a, a left-footed curling shot from the centre of the goal. And Ford showing his agility there. Said openly that he wants to be back here next season. He's a Millwall player, but only till the end of this season and his contract expires. You would think his Millwall days may be numbered. Corner to come in. Right foot in swinger from Rowe. High, hanging to the far post. Headed back to the danger area. Nodded down and then Baker on the line controls it and clears away don't think it was going in though I think if this was a game 10, day, uh, 10 games ago I think you would have seen a bit more activity on the sideline from Paul Cook and Liam Richardson and I wonder if the fans would be a bit more agitated than they are maybe here's Baker oh Bennett was in all oh, kinds of space wow. he didn't spot him though instead goes to the right where Naismith will surely want to cut back onto his left foot no drive to the byline cross on his right foot is behind and it's a goal kick what an opportunity for Baker and you expect to yeah, listen it's easier seeing it from, from up here isn't it everybody saw it because there was a huge groan but not so easy to see on the pitch as a player but certainly a player who you expect to see that was, would be Carl Baker Harry Pell's day is over the former AFC Wimbledon man off James Dayton comes on to make his 50th league appearance for Cheltenham so the activity on the touchline has been performed by Gary Johnson and his assistant Russell Milton. Not too many goals to tell you about us. We're in League Two at the start of this second half. Free kick though to Cheltenham, 25 yards out. Dan Holman committing a foul, uh, being fouled. So a set piece opportunity for Cheltenham. It's been a good few weeks for free kicks at this ground. Surely we're not going to see another. Yeah, come on, let's talk it up. Blackpool two, Leighton Orient one. I think this is one of, the, one of those that's just going to right in the stanchion. You, you know, we, in the old school goals where it would get stuck in, <laughs> in that stanchion. Yes. Obviously, we now have those nets that are held back by the poles behind. David Ford is still lining his wall up. So Blackpool 2 and up. Remember, they just need to win and they're in the playoffs. Carlisle were the other team with that scenario, but they're losing. That's opening the door as things stand for Colchester are beating Yeovil. Stevenage could jump ahead if they win. If both of those two were to fail to win, then Mansfield incredibly would get in. Crawley 2, Mansfield 2. Scrap that because Mansfield aren't winning. Here comes a free kick. Over the wall and over the bar. Rowe was trying to place it and I don't think he was ever going to quite manage that. He needed that postage stamp spot there. Yeah, and it, it did with the pace it had on. It wasn't enough pace on the ball to worry Ford either, even if it had been on target. So Doncaster still heading for the title, but if Hartlepool were to get an equaliser, that would hand the crown to Portsmouth. That's come off Cranston's head. It's not a good header, and it runs away behind to our left for a Portsmouth corner kick. Well, I should think everybody in the ground, apart from those two Cheltenham supporters, are wishing a goal down that front and end to end the season with. Clark and Burgess trot forward. It's taken short. Bennett to Baker. Baker tries to cross it to the far post. Clark's pulled away, nods it down. Rose to hit with his left foot and hit it well off the bar. Chaplin is going to be forced in, but the offside flag was up anyway. Somehow they put it wide, wouldn't have counted. No, that's that's the type of goal you would have wanted, that's for sure. End on a good one. Well, we're not sure if we've been in the end, but at least we've had a good one. Great strike from Rose, good cushion header from Clark. Just a brilliant strike from Rose and he's inches away from another goal five to his name this season Danny Rose playing with confidence as he wins it again and now on the left hand side he's got Bennett and Stevens ahead and it's a lovely threaded ball through to Bennett in the penalty area Bennett looking across for Chaplin Stevens has a shot and drags it well wide still 1-0 good play though well Porsche was certainly committing men forward aren't they <laughs> great terrier work from Rose one minute has a shot next minute gets the gets the ball back and then he gets it back again and plays a good through ball for Bennett I thought Bennett was away then. I thought if he'd opened, he, he was 
there was nobody between him and the goal when he picked the ball up on this left-hand side, 10 yards in from where Paul Cook's standing. And I just thought, go on, open your legs out, push that ball out, no one's going to catch it, but he didn't. And when he tried to square it, it's when the defenders got back. Brown will clear it long. His spell at Eastley, Eastley was a, a brief one. Scott Brown. Eastley got through a number of players, a number of goalkeepers was that this, this season? season. Was that this, this season, season, was it? Yeah. He was one of the 40-odd, was he? I reckon Eastley must have been into 40 players in the league. Equaliser for Plymouth, Grimsby 1, Plymouth 1. Doesn't affect things, though, unless Plymouth get themselves a goal. That would hand them the title. Grimsby 1, Plymouth 1. Pompey still would finish above Plymouth if scores stay as they are. As we said, the fastest reaction and the fastest goal service from elsewhere. We've got a feed from both the games involving Plymouth and Doncaster to our studios, so instant goal news in our commentaries Plymouth now 1-1 with Grimsby Pompey leading by a goal to nil ball forward Burgess needed to win that header because Holman was going to sneak in behind there is still an openness about this game and Doyle tries to play it in behind Bennett will chase but it's 20 yards ahead of him and Brown comes together Cheltenham with one season back in the National League last year hadn't been in the non-league since Steve Cottrell helped them out the end of the 90s a Luton one Morecambe one elsewhere Steve Cottrell on the bench tomorrow for Birmingham as they try and avoid relegation in the championship assistant to Harry Redknapp there otherwise they could be a opponent for Pompey next season yeah Paul Groves there as well former coach and assistant manager I have to say it's not the wasn't the most impossible survival job when Harry took that one on but there is still some work to be done for them tomorrow. But they need Forrest and Blackburn to both win if they were to possibly go down. Burgess nods that back to Ford and is applauded for doing so. 1-0 the Pompey lead. Almost at the hour mark. The atmosphere just quietened down a bit, but we're about to see Jamal Lowe and Gary Roberts come on for Portsmouth. Now Waters, he's got some legs down that left-hand side. Cuts in field past Evans. Looking for options. Just has to lay that one off to Rowe in the end. Rowe will turn back one way and then go to the left-hand side. Davis is forward from left back. And Davis is trying to outrun Baker. Challenge comes in and the ball goes behind for a goal kick. Baker Chaplin. I think that's a fair guess. Chaplin Baker will be happy if it's him again. Or is it going to be Bennett's? You see, Bennett looks a bit nervous. Grimacing, and it is Carl Baker. So, Baker off just before the hour mark, and Jamal Lowe comes on. Baker's already picked out his shin pads. Been in the goals the last couple of weeks. Should say that the goal at Mansfield last week was Carl Baker's, despite the much debate about it. Baker warmly applauded and then Connor Chaplin comes off and Gary Roberts on. Guy, I just have to ask you about Connor Chaplin. Obviously, the second half of the season hasn't gone as well for him. Do you, do you still think there'll be the same vultures circling above looking at him despite him perhaps not getting the same number of goals second half of the season yeah I think so I think I think people that you know the vultures as you call them looked when he was hitting the goals will still be keen on him realising that he hasn't had many games and maybe missed a bit of that sharpness but uh, yeah I, I think, think there'll still be some around um, does he fit into the, the system that Paul Cook plays is a question I'm asking I'm not, I'm not quite sure I do have to wonder if it's He's just more suited to that number 10. We did see him last season play the number 10 role. Probably been well stocked in players. Here's Bennett, edge of the penalty area, pass one challenge, pass another, thought about a shot, now does shot deflected and in! Kyle Bennett with his sixth of the season. It took a wicked deflection, which wrong footed Scott Brown in the Cheltenham goal. Just past the hour mark, the Fratton end erupts. Pass for two, Cheltenham nil. Well, again, coming in from this left-hand side into his right-hand side, onto his right foot. It looked like when he first got past the first man, it looked like he stumbled. Uh, the defender backed off and didn't come and tackle. 
And he took the pass another two, I believe, until he's told a try to go for that bottom right-hand corner as we're looking at it from the front and end and it deflected and went the opposite side in the goalkeeper stranded the score is 2-0 then Michael Doyle comes across for a drink and gets a pat on the back from Paul Cook remember though Pompey still can't win the title unless Hartley Paul can get themselves level against Doncaster and we're underway again, and it's a long way back from here, from Cheltenham. We've seen psychologically how that second goal can demoralise teams here. It's Bennett driving forward again, looks for Lowe on that right-hand side. He played that to Lowe, a touch too late. Lowe had gone, Lowe was off down the right-hand side with the, the right ball in front of him, he's away into the area. Rose he took one more touch, Bennett, then. Here is Bennett on that right-hand side, in field to Roberts. Back to Bennett, chips it in behind, looking towards Lowe. Losing out to Davis. Cheltenham almost played themselves into trouble. It should be able to get them out of danger through Dayton and Cranston. But he hasn't got a right foot to clear on the right back. And Naismith has won it from him. And Naismith is now driving down that left-hand side and showing great strength. Stevens is there as well. Cheltenham just about scrambled the ball out for a Portsmouth throw. Here's Bennett. Touch one way than the other. Corner of the penalty area. Looking for Naismith. Brown comes out and gathers. There's that final little touch ball, isn't it, that we've seen lacking from Bennett every now and again. Great ability. 2-0 the score. Pompey heading for 87 points. Nine more than last season. As driving forward, Bennett slides in. He could go in the book for that challenge. Referee said that's the first one. So I think he'll get away with it. And it remains 2-0 and a free kick to Cheltenham midway inside the Pompey half. I wonder if Stanley Bora might come on. There's uh, cheers all around because a steward tried to gather a beach ball from the touchline and then stacked it while gathering it. Cue a lot of mirth on that touchline. He did manage to retrieve the ball, beach ball, and get it off the pitch. I think it's a she actually. I think it's a she. Newport one, Notts County one. Crew two, Barnet one. Ball back with David Ford, the Pompey goal kicker. So just to fill you in how that Newport goal affects things, they're only drawing with Notts County. So if Hartlepool could turn things round and win that game against Doncaster, they would be safe in the Football League. As it is, they're losing 1 0. So Hartlepool have got half an hour to find two goals as they're going out. Burgess forward, headed away. Here's Cheltenham in midfield. That's a foul by Danny Rose on Waters. And again, he could have got a booking for that one. Stand up if you're going up is the chart. I hope they don't in front of us. So do I. Or well, we're going to have to join in. <laughs> Second change, Jack Bathroom is the man coming on. And it is Jordan Cranston, who's... Well, it's been difficult when you're a right-back, a left-back to play at right-back. That's what he's tried. Bathroom is on. Key part of last season's title-winning team, Bathroom. We are going up. We are going up. His chance. Ball into the penalty area. Headed back across goal. Important header away from Evans, and Lowe completes the clearance. Good positioning by Evans. Saw the danger coming. Knew it was going to be knocked back across. Doyle fouled in midfield and wins it. Now Pompey go on, here's Bennett 20 yards out to Naismith. A great chance for Naismith, the goal! Pompey cutting Cheltenham open once more. And Cal Naismith gets his 14th of the season. He will be the top goal scorer this season. And he hands something to Paul Cook. It's Portsmouth 3, Cheltenham 0. That time Bennett playing the ball, the right pace, the right angle, exactly the right time. Great pass through, quick thinking by Doyle as well for a free kick. No sooner he hit the ground and the free kick was given that he'd taken it to Bennett. Bennett blasted forward, 10-15 yards, saw the run by Naismith, played it to him at the right time and Naismith calmly tucked it in the corner from just inside the 18-yard box. I think there might be a party tonight. I think you could be right. 
three nil now the score and we are three quarters through this game and it just needs one goal at Victoria Park for the titles of Portsmouth. they're doing their bit Wickham have taken the lead at home to Cambridge and remarkably this means if Colchester were to concede an equaliser at home to Yeovil somehow Wickham would make it into the playoffs things stand it's Colchester and Blackpool in those final two spots fascinating end to the League 2 season late kickoff on BBC Radio Solent Sport this evening 3-0 the score in Pompey's favour we've been here every game this season and we'll be there for you every game next season Pompey fans EIEI -E up the football league we go comes out Hartlepool just come very close to an equaliser not there this time though still a quarter of the match remaining ball played forward by Cheltenham Stevens gathers and then plays infield looking for Doyle in the centre of midfield there's Carl Storer takes a touch now O'Shaughnessy at the back want to guess what country uh, Daniel O'Shaughnessy played international football for? Faroe Isles? Finland Finland, oh we've got an F it was close right, it was that way somewhere it's cold, Some a cold place it's not the most Finnish name I've ever heard but there we go scored four Cheltenham against Pompey earlier in the season scored four Pompey against Pompey this season an own goal in the first half Crew three, Barnett one There's a lot of cheering going on, suggesting people think there's a goal gone in somewhere else. But there hasn't been. We are top of the league, is the cry. Well, they do think that here, that's for sure. Well, we have a feed of the game in our studios. Some people are getting a bit excited. Still 1-0 to Doncaster. Well, when that changes, we'll let you know. Hartlepool, Hartlepool is the chant. Stanley Abora is about to come on. Portsmouth are three goals up here. And Abora preparing, stripped, ready to come on. We've got just over 20 minutes remaining. Remember, Grimsby won, Plymouth won, so Pompey would go above Plymouth as things stand. Exeter 2, Carlisle 2. Carlisle can book themselves a place in the playoffs if they win that game. We're just trying to find out why everyone's getting so excited. Haven't, well, Hartlepool haven't scored. And Danny Rose is being taken off and he is going to get a really, really warm reception. Rose off, Stanley Abora on. And guy, Danny Rose... Probably Paul Cook's best signing last summer. Yeah, I, today I think he's been man of the match. I think he's uh, run all over the place, set things up, started things off. Yes, other people will take the glory today, but I think a, a really good performance from a central midfield player today for him. And I think he's, I think he's helped Doyle. I think he's given Doyle the confidence to, to go and press and win the ball back. Jack Munns is coming on for Cheltenham, former Leighton Orient and Tottenham youth player. As we wait to see who comes off. Blackpool three, late Norman at one. They're heading for the playoffs. Stevenage nil, Accrington one. That pushes them down the pecking order in the list of playoff places. Worth pointing out that Portsmouth's tally of 78 points last season was only good enough for sixth. It would be good enough for automatic promotion this season. Pompey look like they're going to beat Cheltenham for the first time. Hartlepool have scored. Hartlepool won, Doncaster won. So a goal for Hartlepool and Pompey, as things stand, are going to win the division. Out to the right-hand side. Roberts lays it off. Low. Low shot and scored! A fourth for Portsmouth. Rifled into the far corner by Jamal Low. And there's going to be double celebrations when people realise Hartlepool have equalised. Jamal Low on target. 
it's four for four, Cheltenham nil. Great finish from Jamal Lowe, but a reverse pass from Gary Roberts. The type of player we expect to see Gary, Gary Roberts play. Hasn't done it so much since Christmas, but a great reverse pass. Great goal. And a fan has got on the pitch. Nobody wants to see that. And Michael Doyle tells him to clear off. And Paul Cook tells him to clear off. And the stewards will close in on him. And, and they he will won't clear him off. Be avoiding the, <laughs> he won't be involved in the celebrations. So we are top of the league. I think people were, were trying to cause mischief a few minutes ago with the celebration. But Hartlepool have equalised now. As things stand, Pompey are going to win the division. But they need Grimsby to hold on against Plymouth and Doncaster to hold on, uh, Hartlepool to hold on against Doncaster. Remember, at the bottom, Hartlepool need to win. They're going down unless they get a second goal. Which just makes you think if they don't get one, Doncaster at some point are going to get one. What if, what if Plymouth score? They'll win the league. Thank you. 1-1 one, one is the score there. Pompey are 4-0 up. Cheltenham play a ball into the Pompey penalty area. Matt Clark will nod it away. Bennett picks it up. What and Bennett will go back to Naismith. What if Pompey draw? They don't win the league. <laughs> and you do some research, you do, don't you? If Cheltenham get four from here... And who's in the playoffs? Remind me of that again. At the moment, <laughs> in the playoffs, we have Luton and Exeter that we know, Colchester and Blackpool are the other two. Have you done the lottery? Do, no, I haven't done the lottery. One, two, three, four, five and six are the numbers this week. Here's Waters, pulls it back. Real chance for Rowe, brilliantly blocked. Clark putting his body on the line at 4-0 up there. Yeah, it was a good block. It was a good pull back. Right on the edge of the area, Rowe should have scored. Well, say he should have scored. It was just a, a rush out and a threw his body in the way, didn't he, Clark? Blocked it with his legs. Luton a 2-1 up against Morecambe. Carlisle now 3-2 up away at Exeter. That knocks Colchester out of the playoffs and brings Carlisle in. Here's Doyle, finds Lowe. As things stand, Pompey are 15 minutes or so plus stoppage time from the League Two title. Evans is driving down the right. He's got Naismith and Roberts in the middle. It's a poor cross. Roberts falls over and it's cleared away by Davis. Man who is on loan, or sorry, signed from Sweden last summer. Bennett to Roberts in the penalty area. Roberts is side down. That's a penalty kick all day long. A horrible challenge from Liam Davis and it's a penalty kick to Portsmouth well can Pompey score a penalty well Gary Roberts has scored the last two that would really put the icing on the cake a penalty to be scored in front of the Fratton end well I thought I thought Bennett was going to get the ball but it's, it's ended up with Evans I think for a minute he thought about it and then Evans decided I'll have it referee saying clear away Portsmouth a 4-0 up Gareth Evans with a short run up to make it 5 0. He's to almost sideways to the ball, isn't he? Here we go. Evans scores! <laughs> Drilled into the top corner. Brown got a hand to it, couldn't keep it out. It's Portsmouth 5, Cheltenham 0. Yeah, was, you always thought with that angle, he was almost sideways to the ball, about three or four steps to the left hand side. But it was going to go that way. It just, was he going to try and bluff the goalkeeper and put it back to where he thought almost where he started from? I thought he was going to put it wide for a moment, just the angle that he had. Well, the keeper went that way, didn't he? Thinking it was obvious where he was going. He got a hand to it, but shoved it into the top corner. Couldn't get there. Wow, Pompey could take the League Two title. They'd take it on goal difference from Plymouth, unless Plymouth get a goal from somewhere. You'll hear first on BBC Radio Solent. So Cheltenham kick off again. They were very competitive in the first half. It's turning into a bit of a nightmare for them. I think Portsmouth going forward have just been uh, sensational in the second half. Once they got in that final third, they had opportunities in the first half and they had opportunities in the first sort of 10 minutes of the second half and then they, they haven't played the ball at the right time or the run was just missed time. They've got the last three, well, the last 20 minutes spot on. Long ball forward from Burgess. Davis is going to get there ahead of low and just see that one out for a throw-in. Oh, we're on our way. Rings out once more. It's ever since that Tuesday night at Crawley, Guy, the form of Portsmouth. It's going to be 12 games, 10 wins since then. 
an incredible statistic. 31 from 36. As Bennett in the centre of midfield will drive towards the penalty area. Back onto his right foot. Almost fell over. Loses possession. And now Rowe to try and bring it away for Cheltenham. Helps it on. And here's Dayton on that right-hand side. Coming forward. Dayton to the edge of the penalty area. Still going Dayton. Dayton shoots and scores. That's a really, really nice goal from James Dayton. And David Ford is unhappy that the clean sheet is gone and a few defenders are getting an earful. Cheltenham have got one back. A good finish from Dayton. Portsmouth 5, Cheltenham 1. <laughs> Ford's furious and Bennett's telling him to do one. <laughs> he said, we've got five goals, what are you worried about? Uh, as a goalkeeper in his defence, you don't want to concede. He'll be upset by that. Pride. It's, it's funny, no one else in the ground was the slightest bit bothered. No, even Pompey fans were applauding the Cheltenham fans for applauding the goal. But David Ford was fuming. 5-1 the score then. Dayton's third of the season. Pompey still on course for the League Two title. Hartley Fuller heading down unless they can find a goal. Which means they cannot settle for a draw. Pompey fans would be happy if that finishes 1-1. It can't, you would think. Pompey knocking it around at the back. Stevenage nil, Accrington two. Stevenage are not going to make the playoffs. Roberts, lovely through ball to Bennett, just tried to take it round the sliding challenge of Boyce, couldn't do so. Former Huddersfield man gets it out for a throw. Yeah, a really confident play from Porsche, wasn't it, along the back. Two centre midfield players, two centre halves, Stevens on this left-hand side. Stroking the ball around, finding gaps, and then Bennett making that forward run and being spotted. Naismith on the left to Bennett, and then Stevens. Bennett picks it up 30 yards out. Bennett on the overlap, Stevens coming forward. Stevens drills it across the face of goal. Brown down well together. It's all happened since those two substitutions. It sounds odd to say this, but Pompey almost don't want the season to end now. This is the fast dozen games have been brilliant for them no they've they've hit a really good form haven't they and they lead Cheltenham by five goals to one on BBC Radio Solent Sport on the final day of the season surely they couldn't take the title they have the second best home record in League One this season and ultimately, Guy, you look at that's that's the difference between this and last season. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and also you look you look at the stats. We, you've said it a few times when we've been out uh, watching Portsmouth about you know they the score, uh, conceded the least amount of goals and scored the most. So you think, well, if they've done that, how come they're not top? <laughs> and they might be. But the home form, they've eked out more points at home this season, which has probably been the key to them going up. Naismith and Bennett one two. Bennett is the penalty area. Bennett tries to curl one. Oh, that's a magnificent save by Brown. There's a goal elsewhere. Hartlepool lead Doncaster by two goals to one. It's just happened now. Hartlepool two, Doncaster one, and reaction around the ground. Have they found out about that goal? Hartlepool are going to be safe as things stand. And Portsmouth are going to win the division. Now Plymouth are going <laughs> to... I just got this feeling Plymouth are going to do something. Ian McInnes is punching the air. Corner kick to be taken. Roberts to send it into the penalty area to the near post. Naismith heads it over and wide. That was a good chance. Yeah, it's a free header. As I've said, you'll hear fastest about goals elsewhere on BBC Radio Solent Sport. 2-1. And that will be enough to keep Hartlepool into the Football League unless Newport can find a goal at home to Notts County. Do you think there's been, there was a much celebration when Pompey won the FA Cup, as there is now? Well, you know, I think people always remember that, but there's something a bit special about this season and the, the fan journey, fan run journey, and, and what it's been about. Is Pompey's fans, it's really their own triumph. Doyle wins a header. In midfield, it's bouncing around. Over to the left-hand side. Remember, it's still Grimsby 1, Plymouth 1. If Plymouth got a goal, that would get them the title. Into the penalty area come Cheltenham. They're forced back away by Munns. Ball to the far post. Ford comes. Always misjudged it, and he's going to get away with it because Bennett, although he slips over, is going to be able to take it away. 5-1 the score. 
Nine to go here, but crucially, probably seven or eight plus stoppage time at Plymouth. Here's Clark. Lifted down the touchline, headed away. We're going to win the league, is the chant. It just seemed so improbable, even when Portsmouth secured promotion, they didn't seem to have any chance of taking the title. No, it didn't seem possible at all. I mean, what was it, 17 points, did you say, turn of the year? In February, like on Doncaster. In February, and he, Doncaster have just... But they've hit the beach. They, well, they have, yeah, that's what it is. I don't know what the beach is like at Doncaster, but they've been there a lot. Cold. <laughs> They're right to do so, though, because their job has been done regardless. Where would be, where'd, where'd be, the, where'd be the closest? I said Skegness, I think. Skegness. Always sounds so appealing. Scarborough, maybe? Abora helps it on. There's still a game going on here. Pompey 5-1 up. And they are just so dominant, as they have been the past couple of months. Does that mean Hartlepool is staying up? Yeah, as things stand, Hartlepool would stay up. At Newport County's expense, that's saving Wilding a trip to Hartlepool in the National League with Eastley next season. Still time for Newport to get one back, though. The atmosphere really building. They're going to do well to keep the fans off the pitch at the end here. Here's Clark, good run from him down the left. Still going, Matt Clark. Then he'll just leave it off to Ender Stevens, left wing. Clark then doesn't really know how to play as an overlapping winger. He might give it a go, though, here. And he plays a 1-2 with Roberts. He didn't really know that he should continue his run, and Roberts is just me saying, you're in there if you carried on, yeah, as it's through to the goalkeeper. He probably hasn't done many of them in the training ground with Roberts to get to the byline. No, I would think so he didn't could didn't understand be right. that Roberts was going to play it back to him. Burgess with a header. Stevens down the touchline. Fratton Park just united in song. And Pompey heading for the League Two title. Coming down the touchline right. Over the top, Naismith's in here. Naismith with a chance for a six. He's done it. Carl Naismith makes it 15 goals for the season. And Pompey are on a roll. They're ending the season in style. Portsmouth, six. Cheltenham, one. Oh, great ball over the top. Naismith looked like he might have handballed it, but referee gave him benefit of doubt. Goalkeeper came charging out and he snuck it underneath him into the back of the net. Well, Pompey doing their bit. They still need to worry about elsewhere, though. I don't think Doncaster are going to come back and beat Hartlepool. Can Grimsby hold on at home to Plymouth? It's a wonderful, wonderful scene. Everyone is up, jumping, singing, clapping in unison on all four sides of Fratton Park. It's like everybody's joining with the karaoke, isn't it? It is like everybody's joining with the karaoke. The flags are waving. Blue and white, swiping back from side to side. And Pompey are heading for the League Two title. Six one they lead against Cheltenham. That's almost not the concern. As I said, Hartlepool are going to stay up as things stand. Unless Newport can find themselves a goal from somewhere at home to Notts County. Play up Pompey sings, the inflatables are still thrown around. Fratton Park is absolutely packed to the rafters. Fans are enjoying this moment. It's been a tough five or six years at Portsmouth. And why shouldn't they enjoy this one? Colchester have got a second goal at home to Yeovil. 2-0, but that's not going to be enough because Blackpool and Carlisle are both winning as things stand. Bennett still going as he's been brought down pushes Rowe away the referee says we'll play advantage and then we'll come back for the free kick minutes remaining in those crucial games Pompey are going to win the title cheering elsewhere I think people are just winding each other up 
It doesn't take much to get everyone cheering at the moment. There is a party atmosphere at Fratton Park. Clark inside his own half for Portsmouth. To Doyle. To Bennett. Cheltenham have just been totally, totally overawed. Yeah, I agree. Second half they have. I think first half they were very much in the game, but they had a couple of more chances in this second half, but promptly they scored the goals. Abora to Stevens brings it down on his chest. Then finds Roberts 30 yards out. Back to Stevens. Five minutes of injury time at Blundell Park between Grimsby and Plymouth. Lovely ball in behind. Stevens is in. Stevens, oh, he tried one touch too many and a challenge comes in. From O'Shaughnessy. Realistically, that's where the problem is for Pompey. Blundell Park, five minutes for Plymouth to find a goal. If they do so, they will be champions. If not, it's going to be Portsmouth. Hartlepool need to hold on against Doncaster and hope Newport don't find a goal. Otherwise, it'll be Newport heading down to the National League. Bartham will take a throw for Cheltenham down the right. We've still got two minutes plus stoppage time left as the ball goes through to David Ford. Don't forget Pompey Ladies playing here tomorrow, two o'clock. They take on Queen's Park Rangers. Do come into Portland if you can. Seven minutes of added time at Victoria Park between Hartlepool and Doncaster. Unless Doncaster find two goals, the title is definitely not going to them. Abora in the centre circle. Cheltenham still with it. Uh, coming forward. Here come Cheltenham through months. Pompey just so hungry, but can't win the ball in midfield. And Munns is driving forward, 20 yards out. Might want to hit one on his right foot. Does straight at forward, gathers well. Yeah, straight out and straight down his throat. Got his body behind it, clutched it to his chest. Fell to the ground and kept hold of the ball. 6-1 is the score. Cal Naismith is awarded the Man of the Match award. And the whole team are applauded. It's been some effort in the end. Probably just minutes away from the League Two title. Unless Plymouth can find something away at Grimsby. 6-1 the score. Cheltenham not beating any of the top three this season. Is there a goal elsewhere to tell you? Of? Swansea have beaten Everton by a goal. To Neil Newport have scored! Newport have scored. So Newport are 2-1 up. And as things stand, Hartlepool are heading down. Newport 2-1 up. Hartlepool heading down. So that would affect the bottom. It doesn't affect the top, where time is running out for Plymouth to find themselves a winner and win the title. Otherwise, it's Pompey's. There's going to be an incredible party this weekend in Portsmouth. Two minutes of added time. I've never seen so few minutes to be added on at the end of the second half. You know, that doesn't surprise me. I've, I've been watching the fourth official. He's had a word with Paul Cook. They then went over to, to talk to the, the Cheltenham coaches. And I'm not sure whether... Because how many substitutions have there been? So that's 30 seconds each. Six, I think. There you go. So they, I think they've actually... Uh, the mercy rule being implied. I think they've you, you will know we're about to go to full time because the referee will signal to his assistant to start running for the tunnel. Do you think he'll give it away with all the players will start edging over? He'll give a free kick right over this touchline here. And, everyone and all the players will be within 10 yards of the tunnel. <laughs> the stewards are out ready. Good luck to them. I think there could be an almighty pitch invasion here. And it looks like there's going to be something to celebrate. But we won't know unless full-time has come at Blondell Park. Have Clark they, dives have they in got a trophy here? The trophy's at Blundell Park. It's not here. Wow. So it can't be presented to Portsmouth today. <laughs> Cheers going elsewhere. But they're a bit premature. <laughs> Everyone's ready to celebrate. We will tell you first what's going on. We have got a feed of both games in our studio. It is not full-time at Grimsby Plymouth. There is still time for Plymouth to find a winner and win League Two. It'll be full-time here first, won't it? It Just may well minutes. be full-time here first. Cheltenham are coming forward and they've lost it through Bennett. We are into the second and final minute of stoppage time. Naismith is down the left-hand side. He's taking his time. Celebration's already starting. 
We'll head to Blundell Park if we need to in a moment. If the full-time whistle goes here. They are still playing. We're about to see this second minute of stoppage time come to an end. Portsmouth are going to win this game 6-1. Gary Johnson's deciding he's going to head down the tunnel. Championes rings out around Fratton Park. Here come Plymouth. Looking for one more, trying to play the ball in. It won't fall for Waters. Clark turned his head, but he's... You mean Ch uh, Cheltenham? Cheltenham, that's the one. <laughs> Here's an opportunity for Dayton. Lays it back. Munns, 25 yards out. Deflected effort behind, and there is time for this corner kick. Champione sings round. Corner kick to Cheltenham. This will be just about it. Referee blows the final whistle. And fo full time at Plymouth. Portsmouth have won League Two. Portsmouth are the champions of the fourth tier. They've done it against all the odds. They've beaten Cheltenham by 6 1. The crowd are all over the pitch. There's an almighty party is going to start here in Portsmouth. Pompey have won League Two. Guy Whittingham. Ah, oh, incredible scenes. <laughs> like you said, good luck to the stewards. They had no chance, did they? One or two dribbled on and then they've all come on. Racing, and right they should as well. Not only getting promoted, but wow. Winning the league from 17 points back in February. That's just astonishing. Obviously got a lot to do with Doncaster going to the beach, but what a run by Portsmouth. What a set of results. Incredible scenes to describe down here in Fratton Park. A blue smoke bomb has gone off. And in front of the director's box, they celebrate the Pompey fans. It's a sea of blue, a sea of arms. David Ford has been engulfed. So, say, so you, many of the players. Can you see any players out there? Doncaster are still playing. So mathematically, if they score twice, they would win the league. But it's going to need something very special from there. Newport are still leading Notts County. There's still things to play for elsewhere. It's not full-time at Hartlepool yet, but Doncaster would need two. What a finish to the League Two season. What an incredible season. What an incredible past few months, Guy. Oh, it's been astonishing, hasn't it? I mean, so what... Andy, if you could, can you work out what the run of points were over, the, over that period? Because it's just... 12, 12 games, 31 points out of 36. Incredible stuff. We will tell you when full-time the whistle goes at Hartlepool it hasn't yet well we said we said it you know a few weeks ago when, once they got promoted don't stop believing keep going for it keep going for Plymouth in second and no they haven't just done that they've gone and won the league a day like today by elbow plays out David Ford has thrown his goalkeeping gloves in the air someone's caught them he's surfing the crowd he's the man he couldn't get away the celebration down in front of us is that full time Still playing at Hartlepool. Doncaster would need two. That's not going to deny the celebrations. Incredible scenes. When you think what this football club has been through over the past few years, it is still not full-time. It's full-time. The whistle has gone at Hartlepool. Hartlepool have beaten Doncaster by two goals to one. And there you go. Portsmouth are the League Two champions. They've made up 17 points on Doncaster in the final few months of the season. What an incredible effort. And a sea of supporters goes wild. The celebrations will go long into the night here. What a scene. Incredible. Another blue smoke bomb goes off and celebrations all over the Fratton Park pitch 